Hi everyone, I'm a new Catherine Mason, fertility physician and doctor mom and here to educate on fertility. In this video, we'll be talking about thyroid disease and how this can impact fertility, miscarriage, obstetrical outcomes, when to treat, when to check thyroid antibodies. So let's talk about some of that today. hypothyroidism has been associated with an increased risk of infertility, miscarriage, adverse obstetrical and neurodevelopmental outcomes. The definition and when to treat subclinical hypothyroidism has been debated. And so that's what we're going to review and focus on primarily in this video. So let's start with the definition of subclinical hypothyroidism. So it is defined when your TSH is above normal range, and that is usually above 4.5 or 5 and the free T4 is normal. This is in contrast to overt hypothyroidism where the TSH is also above normal range, above 4.5 to 5, but the free T4 is low. So that's how you distinguish the two. Antibodies are not used for the diagnosis of subclinical hypothyroidism, but the presence of antibodies can be associated with an increased likelihood of converting to overt hypothyroidism in the future. Now, it's important to distinguish the non-pregnant state and the pregnant state. So what we went over is the non-pregnant state. But in pregnancy, normal TSH is going to be trimester dependent. So in the first trimester, it's normal when the TSH is under 2.5. In the second trimester, a normal TSH is gonna be under three. And in the third trimester, a normal TSH is gonna be under 3.5. How we look at data is we categorize it into strengths of evidence based on the quality of data that we have available. So level A correlates with good evidence to support that recommendation, level B is fair evidence to support that recommendation, and level C is insufficient evidence to support that recommendation. So now let's look at the association of subclinical hypothyroidism to infertility and miscarriage. So let's start with the relationship to infertility. So there is insufficient evidence that subclinical hypothyroidism is associated with infertility. Now let's look at miscarriage. If we're talking about subclinical hypothyroidism where the TSH is above four, there has been fair evidence to show an association with miscarriage. And treatment with levothyroxine in that circumstance, there is good evidence that this will improve pregnancy rates and miscarriage rates. But if we're talking about situations where the TSH is between 2.5 and 4, there is insufficient evidence for a relationship to miscarriage and insufficient evidence that treatment will improve pregnancy rates or miscarriage rates in that scenario. Now when it comes to the relationship between subclinical hypothyroidism and adverse obstetrical outcomes and adverse neurodevelopmental outcomes, there is fair evidence for a relationship between subclinical hypothyroidism and adverse obstetrical outcomes when the TSH is out of that normal range in pregnancy and that normal range we went over earlier in the video. There's no data, however, if a pre-pregnancy TSH between 2.5 and 4 if that's associated with any adverse obstetrical outcomes. When it comes also to neurodevelopmental outcomes, there is an association with fair evidence between subclinical hypothyroidism and adverse neurodevelopmental outcomes. And there's also fair evidence by one randomized control trial that treatment actually did not improve developmental outcomes. And similarly, looking at pre-pregnancy TSH between 2.5 and 4, there's no data on this type of patient population and if there's an association with adverse neurodevelopmental outcomes in pregnancy. Let's move on now to thyroid antibodies. There is good evidence that having thyroid antibodies is associated with miscarriage and fair evidence that it can be associated with infertility. So treatment is recommended in women with thyroid antibodies, particularly if the TSH is above 2.5. Now, lastly, when do we screen for thyroid dysfunction? Actually, there's good evidence that universal screening is not recommended. But if patients have certain risk factors, it is recommended to screen them. So for example, certain risk factors could be if there's ovulatory dysfunction, if they have a personal history of thyroid disease or family history of thyroid disease, if the patient has a physical exam suggestive of thyroid disease, for example, a goiter, if they have a history of autoimmune dysfunction, for example, type 1 diabetes, if they have a history of infertility, 
miscarriage, recurrent pregnancy loss, if they have a history of preterm delivery, and lastly, if they have a history of head or neck radiation. These are all circumstances where it's recommended to screen the fibroid. To summarize the recommendations, it is recommended to check a TSH in a woman with infertility who is attempting pregnancy. In a non-pregnant patient, if the TSH is found to be above four, it is recommended to treat them with levothyroxine with the goal of getting the TSH under 2.5. If the TSH is found to be between 2.5 and four, then there are two options. One is you can monitor that patient's TSH and then treat them if the TSH goes above four, or you could go ahead and treat them with the goal of getting the TSH under 2.5 because there's low risk to it. If the patient is pregnant and in their first trimester, it is recommended to treat them if the TSH is above 2.5. And lastly, thyroid antibodies are not routinely recommended, but you can get them if the patient has repeated TSHs above 2.5 or if the patient has risk factors for thyroid disease present. If the thyroid antibodies are found to be positive, it is recommended to check a TSH and to treat if the TSH is above 2.5. That is it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, I hope you'll give the video a like. Don't forget to subscribe down below. If you have comments or questions, you can leave them for me there also. Thank you again so much for watching and see you in the next video.